My name is Arthur Wise. I have been serving for 50 years in the now ELCA. I came to college after military service, but I became a Lutheran while I was in the service, in the military service. I was stationed in Miami, Florida, and uh, I met a pastor at Grace Lutheran Church in Miami Springs that uh, expressed real grace at a time when I needed to hear it. I grew up as a Baptist. I'm one of five children from Northern Baptist missionaries. I grew up in Nicaragua. I was born in Managua, Nicaragua. I left when I was 18. I thought I was going to go into agronomy, so I went to Ohio to live with a, an uncle for a year. But Ohio State said I wasn't uh, a resident, so I had to consider military service at that point. I joined the Marine Corps in 1957, and I had two years of active duty. In the second year of that, I was sent to Norway, and there I met my future spouse. She didn't become my future spouse until about eight years later. <laughs> During my second tour of active duty, in 1960, I was sent to Miami, and as I mentioned, I joined, I started worshiping at Grace Lutheran Church in Miami Springs, and I actually became a member there eventually. And that helped me to rethink the future. I started applying to colleges and I was accepted at Capital University. I entered Capital University in, in September of 1963 and struggled through the academia, but I made it through and eventually went on to the seminary across the street. ELTAs, ELTS. I graduated from ELTS in 1971. But prior to that, my future spouse at that time had come to the States as an exchange nurse. And she was assigned to Ohio State University Hospital. And that gave us an opportunity to really get to know each other. And we became engaged. And so we got married during, between my junior and senior year of college in Norway. One of the reasons we were able to do that is I was grandfathered into the GI Bill, so the GI Bill was helping us my senior year of college plus three years of academic work in the seminary. I was asked to go back to Miami Springs for internship at my home congregation in Miami Springs, and that was a very good time. Pastor. Albert Schmidt was a real a pastor developer. He had pastor, he had developed that congregation in the ni late 1940s, early 50s, and uh, it was a very vibrant congregation. The members of the church ex exemplified grace in accepting people. After I graduated from seminary, my first call was to serve as a missionary in Colombia, South America because I knew Spanish. I was bilingual. By that time, we had two children. We had, our daughter was born in 1968, while well, I was in seminary, and our son was born in Hialeah, while I was an internship in Florida, in Miami. I was ordained on the 26th of October, on our way at, at Grace Lutheran Church in Miami Springs, in those days, I was the ALC, and the president of the ALC authorized the pastor to do the ordination. And that was on our way down to Colombia to start missionary work. I was assigned to the city of Cali in Colombia, ideal place to live. Average mean temperature year-round is 70 degrees. And it was a very, very nice place. We lived in a middle-class neighborhood, but most of the members that had migrated from other parts of Colombia that were Lutheran had moved to Cali. 
they lived in a poor neighborhood. So eventually we started worshiping in the poor neighborhood towards the end of my stay there. We were there six years. Millie, my wife, was Norwegian, and she had to learn Spanish the hard way down in Colombia. That was my stubbornness that did that because we were offered the opportunity to go to Mexico for a couple of months for her to learn Spanish and, and therefore, but I, I had the opinion that the Colombian Spanish was a very good Spanish and so, and she did remarkably well learning it, although it was hard for her. So here she is, Norwegian with Norwegian primary language, and then she has to learn English and she mastered English pretty well. And then uh, with the two young children, she had to struggle with learning Spanish, another language. Whereas when I arrived in Colombia, I could immerse myself immediately in the ministry. My job was to help develop a congregation in the city of Cali. That was a viable ministry among the poor, not among the middle class. But it was a very interesting time. We came back to the States because we had a commitment to raise our children. And I was not of the kind to th think about boarding school for children. I didn't believe in that. So we came back to the States and we waited for a call. My second call was to, we waited in St. Paul, Minnesota at the missionary residence until we got, got a call. And the call came from Ascension Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My job was to be the Hispanic pastor at that congregation. Hispanic ministry, Lutheran Hispanic ministry in, in Milwaukee had been developed by Missouri Synod pastor. And things did not work out in that transfer. And so Ascension was willing to take on that responsibility. And so they called me. I was you might say third fiddle, the third pastor on staff at a large congregation. I had some responsibilities with the English speaking congregation, but my primary job was to develop the Spanish community. And eventually the LCA called me to be a pastor developer in Worcester, Massachusetts. So I, I transferred from the ALC to the LCA and uh, went through training for pastor developer and uh, I landed in Worcester, Massachusetts to develop a Spanish congregation. Again, with a, within or as part of an adjunct to a former Missouri congregation that was ideally located in a neighborhood with a lot of Hispanics. We started there and uh, eventually moved on to develop the ministry in another location nearby. That was very rewarding. We were able to organize a congregation. However, the experience is a varied experience. It's very hard to develop a Spanish speaking congregation because you're dealing with people that have the laboring classes, they don't have much money, and they don't have the tradition of supporting the church as we have had. So I experienced a clash between the expectations of the church and the par par parameters for developing congregations that don't line up with the financial needs and the long-term growth needs of a strictly Hispanic congregation. I was there from 1981 till 1986. At that point, I received a call to a small congregation in Bridgeport, Connecticut at uh, St. Mary's by the Sea. It's a very nice neighborhood close to, the, close to the Long Island Sound, right next to Long Island. It's part of Long Island Sound uh, between Bridgeport and, and Fairfield. And we, we were there 10 years. It was very important. It was an English speaking congregation, although I did reach out to some Hispanics in the neighborhood. And, uh, but it was basically uh, English speaking. It was a form, most of the members were aging. They had started out as a, as a Sunday school site for Salem Lutheran Church in Bridgeport. 
years, years ago. I was called in 1997 to be the pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in, in Reading, Pennsylvania. So, and I served there as the pastor until 2006 when I retired. Now I'm in my last call. <laughs> I, I didn't want to preach every weekend. So I looked for a call as a visitation pastor. And I've been the visitation pastor for Atonement Lutheran Church in Wyoming since 2006. And it's a very rewarding ministry where I reach out to the homebound. Basic job is to be the eyes and ears of the pastor or the pastor pastors and let them know what's happening with the people they don't normally see on a regular basis.